You're listening to ABC News. At GEICO, you have a choice of ways you could save on car insurance. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. WTMA News Time is 6.02. Good morning, I'm Fred Story with more of the news you'll be talking about on 1250 WTMA and WTMA.com. Dorchester School District 2 officials report a smooth first day of school, but traffic and an increasing number of students are creating concern. According to Pat Rayner with the district, all 22 schools experience traffic congestion, which is normal for the first few years of school. Rayner says 836 more students reported on the first day this year than last. Last year's increase was 484 students on the first day. She says, I am concerned that this large increase in students on opening day means that We'll see higher growth numbers than in recent years. This will add to an already overcrowded system with almost all buildings at overcapacity. Now, according to Rainer, Knightsville Elementary saw the highest growth with an increase of 151 students, bringing their total to 1,213. Homeschooled students will be able to participate in extracurricular activities at public schools under a bill ceremonially signed into law yesterday. Governor Nikki Haley signed the Equal Access to Interscholastic Activities Act at a homeschool resources center in Lexington. It allows students to participate in any extracurricular activities at the school they're zoned to attend. The student must have been homeschooled for at least a year before being eligible. What we will see now is all taxpayers pay for all of these extracurricular activities and all parents who deserve to be able to decide with their children how they want to educate their children are not going to have to choose between sports and music and homeschooling. Education Superintendent Mick Zay says the law makes homeschool a more appealing option for some students. A woman is missing and her family's desperate to find her. 36-year-old Letitia Duncan has been reported by her husband as missing since early yesterday. More from ABC News 4's Nikki Gaskin. We spoke to the woman's aunt and she considers Tina a daughter and has raised her since she was six months old. She says Tina is a mother of two boys ages 8 and 16 and would never abandon them. Tina never stayed from her children. She's a good parent. She take care of children and work very hard. Susie Brown lives just a few houses down from her niece on Captain Avenue in North Charleston. She says the last time she spoke or talked to Tina Duncan was on Saturday around 2 p.m. Susie says she then went on to church, but after not hearing from her niece for quite some time, she became worried. She says she then turned to Tina's husband of about five years for answers. He said, um, I'll go find him. But I don't know where she at. And then I called him this morning. I said, Eddie, you better find my Tina. And then that's when he called the policeman. Jail records show Eddie Duncan was recently booked in jail for domestic violence. But according to Susie, he's now out. In other news, the South Carolina State Ports Authority board is scheduled to discuss plans for an inland port near Greer. The agency meets in Charleston today. It has already agreed to begin engineering studies on the project. The idea that the inland port in the upstate would provide more efficient movement of cargo to the coast by rail. However, the total cost of the port has not been determined. That's what the engineering studies were designed in part to find out. It's been estimated that once up and operating, the inland port could eliminate 50,000 truck trips a year on busy I-26 between Charleston and Greenville Spartanburg. Charleston's breaking ground on a $142 million makeover of the city's Gilliard Municipal Auditorium to create what city officials say will be a world-class performing arts center. Ceremonies are scheduled for today to mark the start of the work on the project. The Gilliard is